expectations are that traffic will continue to grow. Uh, we basically see a very healthy development. And the ballpark number we see in many other parts of the world, GDP times two, mm -hmm. and that, that for, a, for an, an aviation market of this size and this stage of development, I would say is a pretty reliable number. Mm -hmm. So GDP times two is also what we're, we're aiming for. We gave a capacity guidance recently in the low double digit uh, number, so I'd like to stick to that capacity guidance. But that in itself, for a company of our size, Means that's a lot, a lot yeah. of additional yeah. companies, yes. Yes. customers. We need to have a long-term vision, and for Indigo today to having planes ordered till the middle of the next decade, that means we have a 10-year horizon. So every discussion we are having now on MRO with airports, with the government, the direction we're heading, we have a 10-year vision. So I, I think part, of course, is the importance of having a thousand planes uh, on order, which no airline in the world really has. Um, but the important part of it, it's not, not to say we have a thousand planes, that's not important. What's important is that now when it comes to pilots, when it comes to training, when it comes to airports, when it comes to infrastructure, when it comes to MRO capabilities, when it comes to taxation, all these elements, we can have a, a long-term planning with it. If you underpin that growth, you know, we will be doubling towards the end of the decade, which in itself, again, if you take that as a compounded average growth rate between today and the end of the decade, you come to that same number as I just shared as a FY25 outlook. And clearly we are very confident that that number will be matched. And I think it was one of your early analysis where you shared yourself. Think about that. India today has what, 750 aircraft, yeah. give or take. So 750 aircraft in India. Still, it means we're largely underserved. Right. If you, if you take the map of India, and then you realize that 65% of the world population is living in a five to six hour radius from India, right. I'm, I'm very comfortable that the numbers of planes which we have ordered will find home for those planes in terms right. of have adequate operation. We left the station of Long a clear, very typical LCC, uh, if, you, if there is such a thing. We left that station already. And, and then looking at India and looking at Indigo, I don't think we need to be labeled one way or the other. other. You know, India is a unique country, India is a unique market, Indigo is a unique airline, and we, we develop it in the way we feel it should be developed. And therefore, all the parts which you see happening now, the XLR coming in, the wide body coming in, the internationalization, you now in the last two years, we opened up 22 new destinations. So that's all part of the same strategy and the building blocks of that same strategy. You know, the, the, the having the strong balance sheet is, is, is obviously a strong, a strong asset for us and a strong foundation for the company, really. We already have some leases which are a bit longer than they were in the past, so we are already investigating some different forms of financing and, and leasing, and as time goes by, we'll probably uh, continue to build on that. What we have today is we have a little short of 50 ATR aircraft, so next to the, the very foundation of the 321 and 320s, we have 50 ATR. These ATR basically have two roles. Uh, one of them is serving uh, our main hubs and creating a big, big connectivity, and secondly is connecting between tier two and tier two, or tier two and tier three, and, and clearly I think the Udan scheme there is a very effective way to do that. What has resulted that, and that's a fantastic number, and when we share that also with some of the international media in, in Dubai, they were very excited about it. 87% of India's population is living within 100 kilometers from an Indigo-served airport. That in itself is fantastic. So if you, if you look at that, that means we have sort of allowed, democratized if you wish, allowed air travel for millions and millions of first-time flyers, and the regional fleet clearly has helped us to create that proposition. I mean, we fly today to 88 uh, cities in the nation, big and small, and especially these smaller operations or smaller aircraft operations, I should say, have allowed us to build that network. Clearly, and actually we, start, we started on that already. Hey, admittedly, it's a lot of domestic connectivity, 
we're starting now with international connectivity and some of the flights I just mentioned from Central Asia connecting in Delhi to other places. That is the, really the next stage of development. And I think with the aspiration also of the Indian government to build India into a global aviation hub, I think we have a, a, a great position and a great opportunity to start doing that. It will not go by itself though, because mm -hmm. it will require a lot of change, collaboration with airports, airports yes. uh, procedures, yes. regulatory framework. There's a, there's a lot to be done. And right. you know, if you look at India, if you go to the West, we have fantastic hubs in the Middle East. If you go to the, to the East, we have places like Singapore. So we are competing, we are up against some of the best hubs in the yes, world. Yes. So we should aspire to build right. similar great facilities. The short answer is yes, we're, we're comfortable with that. <laughs> the bit longer answer would be, uh, again, like, like with a lot of things, we need to continue to work on that. Uh, so we're closely collaborating with different flight schools. Um, again, here, being in India with such a young and aspirational population, I think we have a, a natural sort of, of appeal uh, to that. We are proudly having the, the world's largest uh, contingent and, and percentage of female pilots. You know, something I think we, not only Indigo, but India should be, should be incredibly proud of. Proud yes. of. It's, it's a fantastic thing. You know, if you look at a lot of other countries, people talk about it. Here we have it. Yeah. Um, so we continue to invest in that collaboration with flight schools, in, in having career paths. In that case, the white bodies, of course, you know. If you see some of the reactions of our pilot group when the white body came in, you know, people were thrilled, excited, you know, that's where we are heading for. Right. And, it, and, it, it and that's so today um, we have 350-ish aircraft, 100 million customers, and we said we're going to double towards the end of the decade. So if you just double these numbers, these are massive numbers. Um, and against that backdrop, and that's why we have basically put that point on the horizon for the end of the decade, we know that we have a lot of work to do uh, to get there. So we are revitalizing a lot of our digital infrastructure, digital initiatives. We have learned from the IROPS operation, which was there last winter, which, you know, unprecedented fog situation throughout the northern belt of India. We've learned from it, so we do now a lot of AI. So we are building basically long-term plannings with airports. We are building long-term plannings for our infrastructure. We're going to expand our training facilities. We're investing heavily in digitization. You know, we speak today a lot on more planes, bigger planes, introduction of a business product. But the investments we're making in training in digital are, are equally important. So when we introduced our strategy two years ago, the strategy had, had sort of three pillars. The one was reassure, get Indigo back to what was the very foundation. I think we're, we're getting there. Number two was whatever was around develop, that's digital, that's HR, and we're working a lot on that. And the last one was create, and that's all the new things we're doing. The new things are getting the attention, but it would never materialize in the correct way if we don't do that middle pillar. Everyone knows that, that we struggle on the short term with the, uh, the supply chain leading to a number of planes in the gr on the ground, which one doesn't want to see. But I would say at Indigo, we have taken a whole range of mitigating measures. So we have some damp leases in place. We extended some leases. We have some CEOs coming back. We have even the two white bodies. And the most important part there, and that's the bridge between the short term and the long term, is that we have a consistent influx of new planes. So when you have 50 plus new aircraft coming in in a, in a year, one every week, you know, think about that. Just for one second, every Monday morning you drive to the office, it's new week, new plane, yeah. new week, new plane, new week, new plane, every week. So, so I think that for us is creating such a, a stable influx that as much as we dislike today's situation, we have been able to consistently live up to our capacity guidance. And when I say for FY25 in the early double digit, we're very comfortable that we can deal with that. Oh, it's, it's been a fantastic journey. Um, first of all, I would say the teams in Indigo have really warmly welcomed me. Um, I've been working 30 years in a different part of the world in a different setting and, and um, work in different countries, but always for the, pretty much the same, the same company. Uh, and the teams in Indigo have been extremely warmly welcoming me in, in and basically opening up uh, literally their, their, their company uh, to do that. 
Secondly, the enormous drive and ambition, not only of Indigo, but the country itself, is, 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 is such a, it's great to be part of that. And then the festivals, yeah, I see the picture. The festivals are just fun. Yeah. Uh, and, and, but more than fun, there's, there's, I would say there's, there's a layer underneath which makes it um, special to be part of it. And I consider it a privilege to, to be able to, to be together with the story. team, to be part of that growth story and to be part of building something here.